Hello everyone, welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today, in this episode of CBSC Board Exam, we'll be dealing with previous year questions of mathematics in CBSC Board Exams. Today, we'll be dealing with the chapter Vector Algebra. This is the 10th chapter in the grade 12 syllabus for CBSC. To, now, let's move on to our first question. This question is about projection of vectors. Find the projection of the vector i cap plus 3j cap plus 7k cap on the vector 2i cap minus 3j cap plus 6k cap. So how do we solve this question? Well, first, let's consider i cap plus 3j cap plus 7k cap as vector a and 2i cap minus 3j cap plus 6k cap as vector b. To find the projection of vector A on vector B, we use the formula 1 by modulus of vector B times vector A dot vector B. So modulus of vector B will be equal to the square of the components of vector B. So 2 square plus minus 3 the whole square plus 6 square the whole root, which will then be equal to 2 square is 4 plus 3 square is 9 plus 6 square is 36. And so the total sum will be 49 and the square root of 49 is 7. Now, how do we find out the value of a dot b? Now, for dot product of two vectors, we have something called the working rule. And it states a1, a2 plus b1, b2 plus c1, c2. a1 and a2 are the x components of the two vectors. b1 and b2 are the y components of the two vectors. And c1, c2, c1 and c2 are the z components of the two vectors. So this is a1, this is b1, this is c1, this is a2, this is b2, and this is c2. So let's put in the values. a1 is 1 times a2 is 2 plus b1 is 3 times b2 is minus 3 plus C1 is 7 times C2 is 6. So what we're getting is 1 into 2 is 2, and 3 into 3 is minus 9, so 2 minus 9, and 7 into 6 is 42, plus 42. 42 plus 2 is 44, and 44 minus 9 will give you 35 as your answer. So vector A dot vector B gives you 35. Now, what about the projection of vector A on vector B? Let's plug in these values in this formula. So one by modulus of vector B into vector A dot vector B will be equal to one by seven times 35. So that is 35 by seven. 7 goes into 35 five times, so the projection of vector A on vector B is equal to 5. And that's how you find the projection of vectors. Let's look at our second question. If vectors A and B are such that modulus of vector A is 3, modulus of vector B is 2 by 3, and vector A cross vector B is a unit vector, then write the angle between vector A and vector B. So we're given the magnitudes of vector A and vector B. So magnitude of vector A is three, magnitude of vector B is two by three. Now we know the statement that A cross B is a unit vector. So if A cross B is a unit vector, then the modulus of a cross B, which is equal to 
modulus of A times modulus of B times sine theta is equal to 1 because for a unit vector, the magnitude is always 1. And the, the component theta is the angle between A and B. So now let's put in the values of modulus of vector A and modulus of vector B. So it'll be 3 times 2 by 3 times sine theta is equal to 1. 3 and 3 gets cancelled, so 2 sine theta is equal to 1. So therefore, sine theta can be written as 1 by 2, and 1 by 2 is the value of sine pi by 6. So therefore, the value of theta is pi by 6. And that's how you easily find out the angle using the cross product. Let's look at our next question. If A bar and B bar are unit vectors, then find the angle between A bar and B bar. Given that root 3 A bar minus B bar is a unit vector. So we know that A and B are unit vectors. So modulus of vector A is 1, modulus of vector B is 1. And since we know that root 3 A bar minus B bar is a unit vector, we can also say that modulus of root 3 A bar minus B bar is equal to 1. Now, how do you find the angle between vector A and vector B? First thing we're going to do is we're going to square both of the sides of this equation. So what we'll get is modulus of root 3 A bar minus B bar, the whole square will be equal to 1 square. Now, 1 square has the same value as 1. So it doesn't change. However, I can use the property modulus of a vector square is the dot product of a vector by itself. So modulus of vector a, the whole square, will be equal to vector a dot vector a. So using that same um, condition, I'm going to write the left hand side as root 3a bar minus b bar times root 3a bar minus b bar is equal to 1. So now what we do is we multiply, and what we get is first we multiply the a's, so that is root 3a bar times root 3a bar, and then minus b bar times root 3a bar, and then and then we write minus root 3a bar times b bar. And then since minus and minus come together, we write it as plus. So plus b bar times b bar. And the whole value will be equal to 1. So root 3 times root 3 gives you root 3 square, which is equal to 3. And vector a dot vector a will be equal to modulus of vector a, the whole square. And then since we have two times, since we have the component b bar times root 3 a bar two times, we will write it as minus 2 times root 3 times vector a times vector b. And then what we do is, since this is a dot product, we'll write the magnitude. So 2 root 3 times modulus of vector a times modulus of vector b times cos theta. And then we have modulus of b, the whole square, at the other end. 
that is b bar dot b bar gives you modulus of b bar the whole square and the right right hand side will be equal to one now what do we do we plug in the values of modulus of a bar and modulus of b bar so essentially we have three minus two root three and then modulus of a bar and modulus of b bar both are one so they don't come here so minus two root three cos theta plus one is equal to one so therefore three minus two root three cos theta is equal to one minus one that is equal to zero and so therefore two root three cos theta is equal to three now let's find the value of cos theta cos theta is equal to three by two root three which we can write as root three times root three divided by two times root three so one of the root threes gets cancelled so we get root three by two as the value of cos theta now root three by two is the value of cos pi by six in reality so that makes the value of theta is equal to pi by six so the angle between vector a and vector b is pi by six or 30 degrees now let's look at this question write the projection of the vector a bar is equal to 2i minus j plus k on the vector b bar is equal to i plus 2j plus 2k so we know our values of a and b and let's write down the formula for projection so projection of vector a on vector b is defined by the formula one by modulus of vector b times vector a dot vector b and so now what we do is we find the value of mod of vector b and the dot product a bar dot b bar so modulus of vector b is the whole root of the sum of the squares of the components of vector b so that means one the whole square plus two the whole square plus two the whole square and everything is under a root so that will be one plus four plus four under root so that will be under root of nine which is equal to three now let's find the value of the dot product a bar dot b bar again here we use the working rule which is a1 a2 plus b1 b2 plus c1 c2 a1 and a2 are the x components of both the vectors b1 and b2 are the y components of both the vectors c1 and c2 are the z components of both the vectors let's plug in the values so this is a1 this is b1 this is c1 this is a2 this is b2 and this is c2 so a1 is 2 times a2 is 1 plus b1 is minus 1 times b2 is 2 plus c1 is 1 times c2 is 2 so that means that the dot product is equal to 2 minus 2 plus 2 so the value of the dot product is equal to 2 so let's put it in the formula for the projection of vector a on vector b so that is 1 by modulus of vector b into a bar dot b bar so that is equal to 1 by 3 times 2 so therefore 2 by 3 is the projection of vector a on vector b now let's move on to the final question of this episode if a bar dot a bar is equal to 0 and a bar dot b bar is equal to 0 then what can be concluded about the vector b bar now you might be thinking how do we come to a proof in this question but in reality it's very easy now notice the first part of the question a bar dot a bar is equal to zero 
do you know what is the value of a vector and a dot product with itself? A vector having a dot product with itself will give you the square of the magnitude of that vector. So that is modulus of a bar, the whole square. So if vector a dot vector a is equal to zero, then we can write modulus of vector a, the whole square is equal to zero. And if the square of vector modulus of vector a is zero, then we can conclude that the modulus of vector a itself will also be zero because zero square, that is zero times zero is still zero. So now we got the value of the magnitude of vector a, which is zero. So that means vector a is a zero vector. So how about if we put the value of the magnitude of vector a in the second equation? So that means a bar dot b bar is equal to zero. So a bar dot b bar is equal to zero. So that is magnitude of vector a times magnitude of vector b times cos theta is equal to zero. And since the magnitude of vector a is zero, so that is zero times magnitude of vector b times cos theta is equal to zero. So from this relation, we can notice that whatever be the value of vector b, this left-hand side would still be zero because there is a zero multiplied to it. So what we can say is that vector b can be any vector. So it could be a zero vector. It could be a non-zero perpendicular vector, or it could be any other non-zero vector. So the vector b bar can have any value, it would be inconsequential to the final result that a bar dot b bar is equal to zero. And the reason why is that the vector a itself is a zero vector. So the vector b can be any vector. It can be a zero vector, it can be a non-zero vector, it could be perpendicular, it, cannot, it can be parallel or anti-parallel or in any other inclination, it doesn't matter. The point is that the magnitude of vector A is zero. So that makes A a zero vector. So B can have any value and these conditions will still remain true. And that is how we find out the nature of vector B. So that concludes this episode of CBSE board exams. So we have uploaded a lot of videos, a couple of videos on vector algebra and a whole lot of other videos regarding maths in grade 12 in this playlist. So be sure to check out the link in the description down below. And if you want access to more of our useful and interesting content, then you could go over to Brain Blitz Audios and subscribe to our channel. You can also hit the notifications button down below for receiving our latest and most interesting content. So until the next episode of CBSE Board Exam, take care, stay safe, Bye-bye for now.